Hello friends, welcome to Oracle new feature video series. So in this video, we are going to learn about new set of privileges introduced from Oracle 12.1. So before understanding what is this new feature is all about, let us see a simple scenario through which we will be able to understand what is this new feature is all about. So to understand better, so what I have did, I have connected to the same database through two different SQL plus session. One connection is using a user called user1 which is connected to the same database. Same way from another SQL plus session, I have connected as a different user called user2. The reason why I connected as a two different users or something like this particular feature uh, involves like two different users because we are going to talk about the privileges which we are going to grant from one user and which we are going to access from the other user. So just for a better understanding, I just changed the color coding of the two different sessions. The left side of the screen you will be see seeing as the user1 connection, this will be in a green color SQL or green color font, whereas in the right side of the window, the SQL plus session which you are connected, the font would be in a blue color. This is just for a better understanding of the commands only. So there is no other uh, issues with respect to this color coding. Okay. Okay. Now we have connected from two different users. So just before understanding this new feature, let us just create one table in a user2. So now I'm going to create a table called t1 in user2. Create table t1. I'm just creating with one column of column one of number data type. Let me just insert some values into this table. T1 values of one. Let me commit the record. Now the informations are committed. Suppose if I want to give access to this particular table to any other users, typically we'll be using the grant privilege. Suppose if I want to give only the select privileges for this table, I don't want any other users to alter my data. So I prefer to give the select privileges. So till select privilege, till the user two gives a select privilege, no other users will be able to access the data. Suppose if user one tries to access this table, suppose if he says select star from user two dot T one. So he will not be able to access same way. Any other users will not be able to access this particular table T one that is from user two. So in case if someone has want to access, then user two has to give a permission. So let me just give a select permission grant select on t1 to which user i am saying to user 1 so once the user 2 gives a select on privilege see uh, just uh, see this keyword we are just giving only the select privilege we are not giving insert or update or delete privileges we are just giving only the select privilege from user 2 that means user 1 will be able to do only the selection he will not be able to do any other operation right now, if user one goes and type the same command, he will be able to access the data. This is perfectly all right. But there is one loophole in this. So along with the select statement, we'll be able to do the for update class also. See, we, see the user one can type the query something like select star from T1 for update. Okay. See the uh, use case of for update class is that basically whenever you want to lock the data, whatever you are selecting, thinking that you will be doing an update later. Okay, that means through a select uh, statement, we'll be able to lock a certain set of records. So that is the use case of for update. But in this scenario, user two actually thought that we are giving only the select privilege, whereas user one is actually using the select clause, it is actually locking the data. So the problem is once the user one has actually locked, user two will not be able to do update operation update t1 set column 1 equal to 100 when user 2 try to do an update here he will not be able to do an update or any dml operation because right now the user uh, this particular table is locked by some other users even though user 2 has actually given select privilege only using the select privilege itself now other users are able to lock this so till the other users are completing their transactions, user two will not be able to acquire the lock on this particular table. So either the user one has to commit or roll back. He basically, he has to complete his transaction. So let me just roll back here. Now, once he issued the rollback or a commit transaction from a user one session, now user two has actually got the lock and now he is able to perform the update operation. So let me just roll back here also. 
So if you see this particular grant, even though he has provided only the select, even though he has granted only the select permission, the other users are now able to lock the table, which is not actually the expected behavior of the select privilege. Okay, but this is how the select privilege will works in uh, earlier version, even from 12.1, even after 12.1 also, this is the behavior. But just to make sure uh, select privilege should do only the read uh, access, Oracle has introduced from 12.1 to new set of privilege that is called read privilege and read any table privilege. Okay, so now let me just roll back this particular uh, or revoke this particular uh, grant. Revoke select on T1 from user 1. Okay, now that we have revoked the grant, so uh, actually a user 1 will not be able to access this. Fine. Now, this is all about the new feature. Instead of select privilege from 12.1, you can give read privilege grant read on T1 to user 1. So, this is the new feature is all about. Once you have given the read permission, read permission will make sure you are, the other users will only be able to read. So, through that means they will be only be able to select. Through select, they will not be able to do the or they will not be able to get the lock on this particular table so now let us try to do the select of this table select star from user 2 dot t1 as expected now he is able to access the data so when he tries to do the for update class or when he tries to use the for update as part of select statement now he will be getting a new error called insufficient privilege previously he was able to get this lock but now even though he gets the lock uh, he will not be able to update because he don't have a privilege earlier also now he will not be even able to get the lock itself so this is all about the new feature from 12.1 so here is the documentation uh, of this uh, new feature so oracle has basically uh, provided two new set of privilege one is called new read object privilege and read any table privilege so read object privilege is nothing but we can just give only the read permission for a certain set of objects so the objects are nothing but the you can give a read privilege for table view materialized view and synonym so for all these things but just keep it in mind you can still use the select object privilege but remember that in addition to enabling the select privilege select privilege allows the user to perform these two operations that means uh, they will, the other users will be able to lock the table in an exclusive mode. Also, the other users will be able to do the select statement with for update keyword. So this is very important. So for a better security aspects, because the Oracle documentation itself says you can you can read here for better security uh, part. You uh, now from twelve dot one you can just give the read object privilege. Okay. So similar to read object privilege, so there is another privilege called read any table, which enables the other users to access all the tables in a read object privilege mode. If you have learned something new, please like this video, subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos, interview questions, concept videos, tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any comments, you can just share to this mail ID, siva.k.academy at gmail.com. Thanks a lot.